I mean, given all the pleasure to have, the, the experience to have, the class that you have, chat with me, in the Premier League players, is this a game you expect your, your players to win? They're good enough to win this um, I think they're good enough to win every game. And, and I also think, well, frailty is that it can make us lose every game. Um, so have a nice balance no matter who I'm playing, whether it be England, whether it be Lithuania. And I think the players will tell you that. There's never a, a difference in what we think. We know we have frailties, we know we have strengths. And on the day you want to try and get more strengths and frailties coming through in your game. And uh, recently there's been more strengths and frailties. Um, and we'll try and build on that. Uh, we'll show them respect, a lot of respect. Because um, I've had some good games here. And uh, one against Slovakia was an excellent game. It was a two-do game, a very good side. So that's what the shows you can do. It doesn't matter where you play for, what you do. You've got a good team spirit, which they have. Then you have to fight that team spirit with your team spirit and the ability that we hopefully will show in the day um, will be enough for us. But as I said, there's no real difference, Tom, between who we're playing. We always think the same way. I think you can ask the players that. I don't think I've ever asked them to sit back and... Sometimes we look like it when we were sitting back, but just sometimes the team's far better than us, it makes us sit back. Um, so I think there's no difference for anybody we play. I think we the same time and attention. Uh, the players will give you that, uh, tell you that. Uh, we don't go over the top, um, but we give the, every team the same time and attention. Well, there been no room for error at this stage, is it natural, really natural, the players to maybe going through the game slightly anxious and how do you as a manager try to ensure that they're not relaxed and work with the players to relax and work with the players? All starts as soon as you meet. First minute you meet them. There's a psychology to it. There's training that you do to it. The information you pass on. So it's, there's not going to be a, a church, church alien speech that makes them feel any better. It's, uh, I don't think that'll... That can work now and then, but in general you make sure that the players are prepared, they feel comfortable in the way they're prepared, the amount of time they're putting into it, the number of training they're putting into it, um, the information you give it up about the opposing team. So it's a, it's a moment you meet the players on the Sunday evening. And even before that, when you have t um, calls to these players before you pick the squad, so it starts well before this. It's no good. I don't think whatever we make the difference to tomorrow morning is not going to make a difference. The training tomorrow is not going to make much difference, that's for sure. And you said it's a discretion to use our will. It just depends on the way they run formation and shape and so on and what. Do you think that that is something you could take on for a game like this? Um, every team, and I think I explained it after, I don't know if you were at the press conference, like I said that uh, that team is based on the strengths of England. And uh, when you have, when you're playing against people who are, who are playing at a higher level than you, you have to adapt to make sure you don't play them at their own game. Um, it's a different game. We've got that formation in the locker now. We like that. There's another couple that we've used over the last few years when the players are fit to use them. Um, but what you're looking at just now is who's playing well, who's scoring goals, who feels good about themselves. That'll be the biggest factor, I think, when the team is announced. In some areas, look, yeah, in some areas a lot more options, in some there's less. I think that hope that's that's the thing. Unless you're a Brazilian national coach or German national coach or England national coach, then that's you will find that there is weaknesses and strengths in stronger areas where it's difficult to pick because sometimes the weakness is a problem and sometimes the strength is a problem to pick players. Do you feel going into this game, there's been so much talk about the pitch, I don't know if you have a look at it yet, what do you make of it? We just get on with it, we're here. We just get on with it. What players have, have played in this, we, we can deal with this. Uh, I remember I got to Serbia one night at the national level, we're up to our neck in mud. Um, so you have to deal with that. We didn't deal with that too well that night, that's for sure. That was a good Serbian side, by the way. Um, but yeah, there is, you know, you have to just deal with it. I think um, players, so people say about footballers, footballers play sometimes just when it's right for them. Players can play any time, any conditions. And hopefully we'll have players on the, 
the pitch tomorrow night. Yes, that's not something... <laughs> I don't think it's been left dry though. I think we've all agreed that it's got to get watered. And I think it was, we've asked to make sure that there's uh, the same amount of water. We're trying to make sure the same amount of water goes in the pitch for training tonight as it would be tomorrow, so you get a real indication. I remember we sell to it, went and played in Moscow, maybe some of you guys were there, it was bone dry. And just as we went after the warm-up of the pitch, the, I mean, the, uh, the water they put on was immense. And then we were all sliding about for 20 minutes. And uh, so we're just asking the observer to make sure that we get the same amount of water on tonight as we would tomorrow. It gives you a fair indication of how the, the pitch is going to play. From your players, one key thing you're looking for from your players in these last four games? Uh, just to look after each other because there'll be a point on there that um, not everybody can play great and we look after them and if you're not playing the greatest of games then just be the best teammate you can be. Big, Sorry. big, big pressure games nowadays, I mean, is there anything to fear with the way the team on this occasion? I don't worry too much about fear or, or worry, whatever it is, Tom. I think there's, there's plenty of time to worry after the occasion. I remember saying that to the players at, first, at Coventry when I first got the job and second bought the league. There's no worry about it. We're not there yet. Only worry about when we get relegated and when we stayed up. So I, I wouldn't really need to worry about anything. I'm aware of what's going on. I understand the importance. But it's, uh, you relish it. It's a challenge. It's a different type of challenge, but it's a challenge. Have you seen it amongst your players? I've seen it. I've seen it for the day I've been here. We've got our failings, but we're a good group. We're a good group. As I said, that there's some in right good places at the moment in the squad who are feeling really good about themselves, and they'd be one of them. And there's some who, because of circumstances, are not feeling at the best at the moment. That's what you get when at national level. You get different periods when the guys come along who are feeling great about themselves and the next time you see them, life's not so great for one reason or another. And that's, that's, that's probably one of the basic things I think that's football picking from, who you think is really up for it, feeling good about themselves. And they all want to be up for it. They all want to play, no matter their form. But it's just making sure that we, we pick the best ones for Thank that you. time. Do you have any, any problems with Robert Snodgrass? He's a terrific, fantastic professional. Do you have any problems playing with more given the... I've not got a problem playing Robert, absolutely not. But there's a, there's a lot of other players playing in his position that are playing right well at the moment, that's for sure. And uh, So, uh, as I say, we are really strong in some areas and, and, and weaker in others. We've lost our question, Gary, on um, what's his issue here? He will be. I spoke to him just as we come off the plane. Yeah, it will be. And the injury itself, it's a knee injury. If you want any more information, you'd have to go to Stoke. I said, West, I said West Brom to him about an hour ago. He's lost to the squad as much as anything else. Of course, yes. He's, he's just, a, I think he's a, a fantastic example how, how, how you behave as an international player, a top player on and off the pitch. And it's, a, it's the best lesson you get for young kids watching people like him. I always remember the same one. I come through with Kendall Gleese, I used to watch him and watch everything he did. Obviously, I feel spectacular to live up to what he did, but um, I took a lot of things from him. And I still do to this day, by the way. His chipping's fantastic around the edge of the green. 